the first thing that a teacher should do in terms of wanting to incorporate music into their classroom is visit Smithsonian's Global Sound. I mean, honestly, that's uh, it is a treasure trove of incredible resources. Here's a lesson. You want to introduce uh, the four classifications of instruments to your students. And because you're using multicultural music, you're going to use idiophones, aerophones, uh, chordophones, and membranophones, right? You do kind of like a drop-the-needle kind of game. You divide the, the, the class into two teams. You pl- just start picking things off the website, playing the little snippets for them. They have, to, they have to identify which category it goes into. They get points. It's a great way to introduce kids to all kinds of different sounds. It gets them listening. And eventually that will help them when you want to go back and speak specifically about these instruments. They'll go, oh, I heard that. Remember that game we played? I heard that instrument. Now, all of a sudden your kids are going to be able to hear music from Zimbabwe. They're going to be able to hear... They're going to be able to hear the culture. And that's, that's the beautiful thing about music is that you can show pictures, you can give words, but when those kids hear that music, I, I know that when I play it for my kids in, their, in the classroom, they just, they come alive. They love it. it. It makes them feel like maybe they are in Zimbabwe. And that's an incredible way to, to connect kids to their learning. A, a beautiful thing about music is that we can take Lewis and Clark and the students can be learning about Lewis and Clark in their fourth grade classroom. And this has happened in my, in my school. And some of them are not very invested in it. They, they don't find it interesting. I, I can say I was a student who did not like social studies. Every time that textbook came out, I was just like, oh, could it be just something else? I just, I hated it. However, if I had gone into my music classroom and my teacher had been teaching us a musical about Lewis and Clark and teaching us about the music of that time and helping us learn it, that would have had made me invest in what was happening in the regular classroom. And I have a great example of this. Um, about seven or eight years ago, I had a, uh, a group of fourth graders who were learning about Lewis and Clark, and we were doing a musical about the exploration of Lewis and Clark. I had a teacher who was probably not all that excited about this, this collaboration that was going on. She sort of kind of stuck in the way she liked to do this unit and at the end of the big presentation to the parents and everything, she came up to me and she said, you know, um, I have to tell you that this, this was probably the most successful my kids have ever been in learning this content. Usually when I give the end of the unit test, they score somewhere around, you know, maybe 70% of them pass. This year, every one of them passed. And she said, but the strangest thing was happening. Said, What's that? Goes, they were all humming during the test.